Uh, here, Hades Omega here, and we're riding the Zero SRS, okay? It's been a minute since I've ridden uh, a Zero bike. <laughs> I wanted to ride this bike earlier in the year, but the uh, pandemic hit, and and we had that shelter-in-place dealy, and then, uh, and yeah, so that's what happened. So here we are in eco mode right now. It's so quiet, it's like a spaceship. This bike does have all the touring bags and stuff on it. Uh, it has side cases and a top case, so uh, we can go. We'll we can go uh, uh, park somewhere and we'll take a look at them in a bit, so you guys can get a good idea. The accessories on this bike. I've never seen one with all the stuff on it. It's good to know that you can take it. It really does look like a touring bike. And so the interesting, I have ridden the SRF before. Check that video out. I uh, I'll put it a link at the end of the video. But um, so the the big the biggest difference between the SRF and the SRS is uh it uh it is um it has a fairing. Okay, it has like a front fairing. A front fairing. Yeah, it's a kind of like a semi-naked kind of bike. The whole front has like a fairing on it, so it should be better on the freeway, supposedly. So, so right now we're in eco mode. You get a good sensor of the acceleration from a stoplight. Here we go. That was full throttle. It makes a it makes this awful noise when taking off. I wonder what that is. Okay. Uh, so let's see if we can change into sport mode while riding. Okay, street mode, sport mode, I'm going to let off, okay, there we go, I got it, so, so whenever you want to change the modes, you need to, uh, you need to roll off the throttle before you select it, so the way it works is you got to hold the mode button down, and then it, and then the, the mode things flashes on the screen, and then you can hit the left and the right paddle, and then select what mode you want, okay. So now we're in sport mode. So okay, that was that one was full twist. That last right, I don't know if I can get a full twist on this one, but we're at 64% capacity. So yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh my God! <laughs> Jesus. Okay, that was like zero to 40, full twist from a light, man, dude. It is a big difference from eco mode to like street sport mode. Okay. I think I'm just going to keep it in sport mode, okay? That's the fun one. I never used eco mode on my electric bike. The regen isn't very strong. That's one of my gripes. But I heard there, there's, there's in the app you can kind of fine tune that. And I heard this bike does have a lot of regen, so. But I'm not going to mess around with it. It's not my bike, so. So yeah, so quiet. We'll see how it is on the freeway. That's that's the biggest difference between this bike and the SRF would be like high speed riding. Supposedly, if you you know if you have better aerodynamics on the bike, like a windscreen, you know, uh, riders are not very aerodynamic. You're just sticking up there, you know, you're like a nail floating in the wind type of thing, you know, or more 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 than more than a nail. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm gonna say. See how it it's very flickable. Yes, it's very flickable. So I remember the SRF. The SRF when I rode it, I remember it felt like a big bike, but it felt like a big bike, but uh, it didn't it didn't feel it didn't handle like one. So this bike is about 500 pounds, okay? So it's it's not a lightweight. Especially since this one has all the touring stuff on, I bet you it weighs more than 500 pounds, but it don't feel like it, that's for sure. It's pretty comfy, it's pretty upright. Um, maybe you're, you're leaning forward just a little bit, you know. I was riding my, my DR650 and that's, that's a pretty upright bike, so. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do a little cornering test here. Uh, we're probably not going to go fast on this one because we got this Lexus in front of us, but I have a way to get back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, easy to corner. It feels like it's really low to the ground, too. Okay, so we're gonna get... Oh, what the heck, dude? Okay, I'm gonna break a little bit, turn in. 
Very good. Straighten out, turn. Very nice. Okay, we're gonna go do that again. <laughs> so the one, th yeah, the interesting thing about this bike is it's silent. It makes like no noise. It, it, you get a little whirring sound, but not really. It does increase regen a little bit when you brake, but not by a lot. It's kind of like a Toyota Prius. When you step on the brakes a little bit, it increases the regen. And then at a certain point, it will... Uh, thing. Okay, let's, we're going to do a U-turn test right now. Let's see, we're like in the middle. And no problem. <laughs> Full twist. Oh my god! <laughs> Jeez! It's got so much torque. <laughs> All right, here, we get to go a little bit faster on this one now. 60 mile is so fast, man. It is super bike fast. I forget there's a rear brake on this. I'm hanging off right now, looking through the turn. Okay. Brake a little bit before we get in the turn. Out, in, focusing on that SUV, hopefully it gets out of my way, okay, that's good. Yeah, it, it pretty effortlessly handles. It does feel kind of big, but, but yeah, it's got some big, uh, it's got some big uh, rubber on it, man, so. All right, so here we go. What is up with these people getting in my way, man? They like to get on the off ramp and then, you know, okay, whatever. Could have done another uh, on-ramp test, but. No, this Volvo got in my way twice. Like they get off and they get on the freeway. Okay, so we're gonna do a freeway test right now to see how quiet this bad boy is on the freeway. The more quiet it is, the more aerodynamic it is, and the more aerodynamic it is, the more range you get. It's pretty quiet. The airflow over my head is pretty smooth. Actually, yeah. Um, the windscreen is we're pretty good. It like. It's about like my eye height when I'm, and if I tuck in, oh my god, it's a good thing this seat is kind of dished, because it holds your booty in. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to go, it's still a little bit noisy, but hey, if you tuck down all the way, it's pretty quiet. 65 miles an hour, pretty quiet. Oh my god, there's just so much traffic, I can't, you know, sorry guys, I can't open it up. We're at 58% right now, by the way, I'm just smashing on it, so. Okay, here we go. The mirrors work pretty good, even in the tuck. I kind of have to just move my head a little bit and check it. Alright, here we go. 75, and a quick twist of the wrist. Man, does it have a lot of power, dude. I forgot how fast these things are, man. Okay, we're going to go through here. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god. I hit, a, I hit 100. <laughs> it was so easy. It was so easy. I hit 100. This fast, okay. So this, I'm, I'm, si I'm sitting upright right now. It pretty much blocks all the wind. I would say to the top of your helmet. Yeah, the windscreen is actually really good, but it's a little quieter if you tuck, if you duck down a little bit, if you tuck behind the windscreen. I'm wondering if you can get a bigger windscreen for it, but actually, it's pretty good. They, they definitely engineered it well, you know. I am getting a lot of wind on my arms though. Yeah, my arms, I, I can feel my arms in the wind, so maybe if you kind of, yeah, definitely if you tuck in, you'll, you'll get better aerodynamics. Just a little bit. It's a little bit, it, it's kind of a little bad on your back, you know, if you tuck in, but hey, that, I think right here, about in the middle, 
is the ideal, uh, you know, freeway, uh, freeway riding uh, tuck position, okay? You can tuck more, you can tuck almost right under the screen too, but it's not very comfortable. But you can also lean on the tank too. All right, from 70 miles an hour, we'll go to 80 miles an hour. I'll flick it all the way. Boom! Uh, oh, Jesus! <laughs> and, and mind you, uh, um, uh, let's slow down before we get a ticket, man. Uh, mind you, uh, this is only 51% charged right now, man, and it's so fast. I forget how fast these bikes are, man. The impulse has, like, nothing on this bike. <laughs> Very good, very good aerodynamics. Basically a half tuck and it's, you know, and it's fairly quiet. I'm not, I don't have the most quietest helmet on today. All right, we're gonna get off the freeway here. I, I'm, I'm thinking I got a downshift, I got a downshift, but I'm not. I'm gonna just brake a little bit and then turn and then lean into the turn. I would love to take this thing on a racetrack, man. It does have a decent amount of regen off uh, when you uh, when you're going pretty fast. Pretty good stoppers. Ugh, there we go, full brake right there. Beautiful man, it is a uh, is quite a joy to ride this bike. So uh, let me see if I can fiddle around with some of the electronics. I'm gonna flick the mode button to the right and hold it down. Okay, that's traction control. You can adjust the traction control by going by flicking it to the right and holding it down. To the left, if you hold it down. Oh, okay. The the left is a uh, uh, heated grips. I, I, okay, I don't really need that right now. Okay, and then when you want to select it, you just press down. You know, and so easy. You just twist and go. No worry about any clutch stalling, slipping clutches. You know, that kind of thing. Um, what else? Well, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. There's a traction control and uh, heated grips. Okay, and then we'll kind of take a look at the bike. Uh, we'll get off the bike and we'll take a look at it, and then that'll be the end of the ride. So, it is a little noisy. The drivetrain is a little noisy on this. I, I don't know if it's because it's you know people. It's a demo bike and people have been riding it, you know. But anyway, we're gonna go. We're gonna go to the Rose Garden. We'll take a look at this bike, and then uh, we'll go return it. So. Uh, I'll have all the specs at the beginning of the video if you guys are wondering. I don't know if this is the premium model or the, or the standard model. It has heated grip, so I, I believe it is the premium model. I think the premium that was one of the features of the, the premium model. It had heated grips. And there's also some optional chargers and stuff you can get for it. So, uh, so uh, and then the price, okay? <laughs> one thing, this is the one, that's the one thing I don't have one, why I don't have one of these is the price. It's about $20,000 is the price. Um, I think it starts at 19 and, and then you can go all the way up to like 21 or 22,000, okay? However, they are, uh, they are accepting trade-ins. You can trade your gas burner in for one of these guys and then you get, I think you get 1,500 off. And then there are some California, um, EV incentives. You can get a rebate on this, maybe, and you can get a federal tax credit. So that's, you know, that kind of makes it, you know, a little easier to purchase but 20,000 is a lot you know but it is a really nice bike it's a really premium bike you know the build quality is excellent on this um, Hayes Mega has been riding the zero bikes for a couple of years now you know just for demo rides and stuff I would really like to own one sometime <laughs> just to see what it's like but I, I have a victory impulse so I'm quite happy with it if it was just this is fast here man <laughs> but yeah so that's one of the things. If you add a windscreen to your electric motorcycle, you can you can pick up a few miles range on it because you know you have better aerodynamics. Now I did notice my arms were getting hit by the wind a lot too, and unless you like kind of scoot your elbows in and then tuck in, um, your arms are going to hang out in the wind too. So that that could affect your range also. So I would say a half tuck, and it's it's fairly comfortable. You're not leaning forward too much, you know. You can get behind it all the way, but you don't really need to. Um, and uh, and yeah, it's got this big tank thing here. We'll go take a look at it earlier to later. Really flickable. Really quiet. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead here to the rose garden. It's fairly 
fairly easy to uh, split lanes with it. Uh, not split lanes. Uh, yeah, that's one thing I will not be doing with this bike, splitting lanes, because it has uh, it has the luggage on it. So I was like, yeah, I don't want to scratch those luggages up <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> but uh, but you, we can go take a look at it. It's um, shad luggage. It's pretty good. Pretty good quality stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll take a look at it. It's pretty nice. Uh, and the color of the bike is like kind of like a battleship gray. I'm not really sure what they exactly call it, but it's like a battleship gray. It's kind of like a light gray, sort of, or like a medium to light gray. Not quite gun gunship gray. Okay. It has all your motor temp and battery stuff. I do wish. I think it has an ambient temp also, maybe. Uh, on the yeah, I'll kind of just tell you what's on the gauge cluster. You guys probably can't see it in the video, but on the upper left, there's a there's a temperature. I think that's an ambient temperature. Then there's a battery temperature. There's a battery temperature meter underneath that, and then I think this is our our, our turn right uh, here. And there is a yeah, there's a motor temp, and there's our time on the other side, on the upper right, and there is a heated grips indicator on it. So quiet. Um. There is a uh, a range indicator on on it on the bottom right, and then there tells you the range, 67 miles, and then 38. I think that's a trip meter on the on the very bottom right. And then state of charge is 47%. That's on the other side, on the bottom left, and then on the other bottom left, there's another kind of. There's so many trip meters on this. I think you can customize the gauges and stuff, but not my bike, not going to do it. <laughs> okay, and then there's a speedometer in the center, and then it's got this, uh, I think it's a, it's a battery meter. This is what the graphic is. It's a battery meter. It tells you how much charge you got. So it's about 40, 47% of the ring is, uh, is illuminated, so that means that 47% of the charge is available in the battery pack. This has a, I think, 14.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, but it's 12.2 too nominal it's it's almost I would say it's almost a quarter of the size more capacity than the uh, or maybe like yeah probably a quarter compared to the uh, uh, what should we call it the impulse okay I'm gonna go park the bike here and we're gonna go take a look at the exterior bits and then uh, then that'll be the end of the ride so and then I'll kind of give you some quick, honest riding impressions of it. Uh, like I said, I rode the SRF before, and I know this thing rocks, so. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's take a look at this bike. It is a big bike. It's kind of got this shark face on it, as though I like to call it. It's a shark face. <laughs> like a kind of like a, well, not quite a hammerhead, but. It's got four LEDs in the front. Okay, you can see one, two of them are on. If we put the high beam on, which you flick it forward, I think, all of them will turn on. In fact, we should probably be riding with the high beams on. Okay, there are, there are these kind of square looking LED lights, I think. It's kind of like staring through a mirror. Very nice. It's kind of got a... It's a, you know what? It does look like a shark. That's why it reminds me it's a shark because it's the same color as a shark. It's a kind of gray shark color, you know. It has J1 calipers, two in the front. Very good stoppers. Here's the side view right here. It's kind of got like a half fairing. If you were to, you know, I guess this isn't here on the SRF. This isn't here. All of this is not on the SRF. This part here, and this part here, and this part, and this part. So, other than that, it's pretty much the same. So, it's got a black frame. The battery is housed back here, and you see some heat sinks and stuff on it. Here's the motor. It's got some huge heat sinks on it. Let's see how warm that is. We haven't we haven't really been ripping on it too much, but it's not warm at all. <laughs> it didn't even break a sweat with that kind of running. Um, it has some pretty wide rear a uh, rear wheel. It's a 180 in the rear, and, it, and they're running. It's rocking Pirelli Diablo Rosos, a 120 in the front. Okay, and then here's the interesting thing about this: it has the luggage racks on it. So it's got this really big grab handle. I noticed this is a little different than the SRF. Big grab handle, big meaty, you know, heavy duty. Looks like it's looks like there's some like overspray here. Um, yeah, so we, we can take a look at a, here's the windscreen. It has a little, like, kind of uh, scoop in the front, I guess, to reduce air pressure. 
the aerodynamics works really good. You got to be like at a half tuck, I think, I feel, to be comfortable and be aerodynamic at the same time. Um, I will sit on it, and I'll tell you, it's pretty low. It looks like a big bike, but it's not really that tall. I can heel foot it. it that's how low it is. So for you short riders, it's not, it won't, probably won't be that big a problem. <laughs> I'm 5'10", 175 pounds. Okay, it has a center stand. This that's one thing the SRF doesn't have. There's a center stand right here. Okay, so you need to do some kind of I don't know what you need the center stand for <laughs> because you're not going to do any chain maintenance. Maybe if you needed to change the tires or something or plug a tire or something. Um, okay, here is a the charger right here. You plug in a J. It's got a J plug. I don't know if this has a, you there's like three different um, chargers you can get on this bike. The regular the base model has a 3.3 kilowatt. The uh, the premium has a 6.6 .6 kilowatt, and then you can get an even faster one. Uh, there's a there's an optional one, but uh, I think s six kilowatt is about the limit on these uh, these uh, level one level two charging stations. So it's really not going to charge faster than six uh, unless you can find like two chargers right next to each other. I think there's a trunk here. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I remember. It's right here. Open this, and there's a there's a trunk in the front. Okay. I think this is where the power tank would go. There's a USB charge port in there. That's nice. There's a bunch of keys in there. I think this is a EVSC right here. That's what it is. Some lucky owner will get this bike. <laughs> okay. Pretty nice. And and I think I think you can lock your key in there. <laughs> See if you did this. And you threw your key in there and you close this, you're not opening it. You're not getting your keys, so don't do that. <laughs> I remember the BMW does the same thing, the BMW scooter. Okay, uh, let's go check out the side cases. I, You know what? It uses a different key. Oh, it's right here. Okay, the key's right here. Okay, he's making us know how to open it. Sorry, guys. But I could, I hopefully, this is a different, this is a different key also. It's not a match set. Okay, I'm probably going to just speed this part of the video. Okay, anyway, yeah, there, there are some luggage options you can get through this bike, so that's nice. It has a hugger type front rear fender here with a license plate on it. Um, top case, side cases. You can go touring with this bike. You can put it in your hotel room and plug it into and charge it in there. Yeah, you could, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah, you totally could. You know, it's not going to drip any oil or anything, you know. Um, yeah. So the way the uh, the rack mounts is it mounts on the foot peg here and then there's a it mounts on this Yeah, it mounts on the foot peg and then there's some like brackets on the bottom. Here, and then there's a crossbar right here. Really interesting stuff. Ooh, it's already got a scratch on it. I didn't do it. <laughs> okay. So that's the outside of it. Interesting looking. It looks, it's gonna get that like kind of 90s motorcycle look, sort of. Kind of looks like a, a big robot or something. Very cool. Okay, so I, that, that's the kind of, uh, here's the seat. I did notice that your butt kind of the back of your butt touches this, so like you know if you if you're going really fast, you know you got something to support you. <laughs> it looks fairly comfortable to ride with the passenger too. Okay, it has these mirrors that you can fold into. I I think. Yeah, yeah, you can fold them in. Okay, I just messed up the mirror position too. It's a zero SRS with a zero badge there. Very nice. I like it. Would I buy one of these? You know what? I would, like I said, I would buy the SRF, and I would buy, I would buy this bike too. I think uh, I would be interesting to do a range test on this bike. Okay. So we're gonna go fire this puppy up. Okay. You just gotta make sure the kickstand is up, so it won't go anywhere. You've got a little bit of a bend. I would say a 45 degree bend in your knee. For for me, I'm a 5'10", 175 pounds. So. Okay, so that's it. That's the end of the demo ride. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We kind of took a look, quick look at the bike. Sorry, I couldn't get the, I couldn't get the top and the side cases open. I I've never operated one of those. I'm used to the, uh, 
the Givy one. So sorry, I didn't. I couldn't get them open, but it, it looks like you can fit. You might be able to fit a helmet in, in all of them. Very easy to ride. It, it's definitely it. It looks like an intimidating bike to ride, but it's not. It, it's really easy to ride. Um, Zero did a really great job with this bike. It's not that tall, so you shorter riders can ride it. Um, it's very flickable, very maneuverable. You saw me do those parking lot uh, maneuvers, like the circles and the figure eight and stuff. Uh, and and the, the throttle is very smooth, you know. They did an outstanding job, you know, on the fit and finish and, you know, polishing up the, the electrical system and all that. Oh, my God, that's so much power, man. They told me this thing will not wheelie, too, because it has too much weight, like, underneath or something. Um, also, yeah, on the freeway, it's a little more comfortable to ride this, I think, than the SRF, but... I like it. I like it a lot. I would rock it. It has, if you guys are wondering how much range it has, I'd, I would estimate it has about 100 miles. I, you know, I can't, I can't say for sure, but uh, I think it says 160 city and like one, and I think it's like 89 freeways. I, I will put the specs below for the range in the subtitle below, and they'll be at the beginning of the video. All the specs will be at the beginning of the video. I think this is the premium version because it has the heated grips. Uh, so it has probably has a six kilowatt onboard charger. I would at least buy the premium one so you can get the faster charger um, because um, The big drawback to this bike compared to like say an Energica is you don't have a DC fast charge and DC fast chargers are popping up all over the place so and they can charge your bike in like, you know, 20 30 minutes, you know To most of the way, you know, this will take longer. It'll take I think I think it's six kilowatts. It takes two hours to charge at 3 kilowatts, it takes 4 hours to charge, and I think from the outlet, from a 110 outlet, it's like like more than 10 hours. Um, it takes about the same amount of time to charge my impulse, so um, I think I think it's a little bit longer just simply because it's, the uh, battery's bigger. The battery's bigger. It takes longer to charge, obviously, because it has more capacity. You can't, you can't cheat. You can't cheat science, man. <laughs> you can't cheat science. Woo! All right. Well, I enjoyed it. Would I buy this bike? Yes, I would. I still decide, you know, it's it feels a lot lighter than the Energica. The Energica, it just feels like a pig compared to this. But, Energica has a DC fast charger. Easy 8. Easy 8. Let's see how tight, let's see how tight we can make the circle. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's got a really good turning radius. Really good. Really good. Look at that. That's amazing. That's amazing. Oh. You definitely, when you, if you suddenly stop the bike like that, you definitely feel the weight of the bike. So there you go. You can down, you can buy these from uh, San Jose BMW. There's a little plug for them. Thanks for letting me ride the bike. Let's try to put it on the center stand. So it's got a big meaty grab handle here to operate the center stand. Not too bad. It wasn't too bad to get it on there. So uh, the sign of a well-engineered side st center stand is, uh, you know, when you can get it on the center stand without much effort. <laughs> it's got a good grab handle, man. This big beefy thing. That's why probably they made it stronger because you're going to have to lift the bike. If Hades Omega was going to buy one of these, I would buy the premium one because, well, it, you, it's got the 6 kilowatt charger. You can charge faster with it. I think that's good enough, 6 kilowatt, you know. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I would have to live with it, you know, for a while. I would have to do a long-term review, but I would say you can probably get 100 miles mixed range on this, maybe. And I think that would be, like, the ideal electric bike, you know, if you can go 100 miles with it before having to charge it, you know. Um, but you, it'll be painful to have to charge it, you know, <laughs> and if, if you have to wait, you know. So it's kind of... It's, it's set up for touring, but, you know, it doesn't have DC fast charge, so wherever you're going, it better be, you know, it better, there better be a charger at 100 miles, and you better, uh, better be able to, uh, to have a lot of time to charge it, <laughs> at least two hours, you know, two, three hours, so. All right, here's Miguel.